sorry, excuse me. <coughs> أصدقت حديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في نار ما بعد يقول الإمام البخاري رحمه الله تعالى في جامع صحيح حدثنا أبو اليمان قال أخبرنا شعيب وقال حدثنا أبو الزناد عن العرج عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم قال إن لله تسعة وتسعين اسما مئة إلا واحدة من أحصاها دخل الجنة أو بهذا المعنى والحديث أخرجه الإمام مسلم يعني صحيح بخاري صحيح مسلم أوستين براذرز عن الإسلام and my dear sisters in Al-Islam, the very companion of Hurayra, may Allah be pleased with him, reports that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'een isma, that Allah has 99 names, mi'atan illa wahida, Allah has 100 names except for one, reinforcing and re-emphasizing the number of 99. Allah has 99 names. Men ahsaha, whoever memorizes those names, counts them, knows them by heart, will have a ticket, will have a guarantee, will have a free entrance into paradise. Indeed, Allah has 99 names. And any Muslim, poor or rich, big or small, thin or thick, dark or light, male or female, learn it or lay man or lay woman, any Muslim who sits down and devotes some time, some effort, some energy, some concern, and some sincerity to learn all of Allah's beautiful names that are mentioned, that we know of, of those 99 names, will go to paradise. He'll be allowed into Jannah. Indeed, Allah has 99 names. And anyone from among you who chooses to do himself a favor, who wishes to be generous and kind to herself, to help out yourself by memorizing the name of Allah a day, or a week, or a month, regardless how slow your pace may be, or five names a day, ten names a day, and whoever sits down and teaches their little son and their little daughter a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once a day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says he will enter paradise. And as we all know, there's so many ways of going to paradise. There are many diverse roads and routes that lead to one end and one destination. 
But all of those ways, all of those routes, they take some effort. They take a little bit of sweat. They take a little bit of time. And they take a bit of sacrifice. As the Prophet ﷺ tells us in another authentic report, Paradise is surrounded and enveloped by hardships and difficulties. And hell, Jahannam, is surrounded by lusts, by joy, by pleasure, by things that feel good and that are easy, not difficult, easy to get into, extremely difficult to get out of. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in another authentic hadith about words and about statements, about supplications and means of remembrance which are thaqilatani fil mizan, which are heavy in the scales. The Prophet Sallallahu says, thaqilatani fil mizan, heavy in the scales. And the people of knowledge they say is that good deeds, they seem to be difficult or burdensome, لِأَنَّ مَرَاتَ حَضَرَتْ وَغَابَتْ حَلَاوَتُهَا is that the sweetness, you can't see it yet. But you experience the bitterness. And sins, and lusts, and pleasures, and things that you are prone to do, حَضَرَتْ حَلَاوَتُهَا وَغَابَتْ مَرَاتُهَا The sweetness is immediate, but the bitterness comes later on. The hard work is in your face when it comes to doing good. You have to sacrifice. You want to memorize? You have to sacrifice. Put your phone down. You have to take some time off of work. Take a, a break from the TV, from sports, from politics, from making and saving money and spending and shopping. And that may be a bit bitter. But the sweetness of that hard work will come later on. And laziness and lethargy and comfort and relaxation and just chilling and, you know, I have no responsibility. It's sweet. It tastes good. It's easy upon the nuts. But the hardship will come later. After the laughter comes tears. So the Prophet وسلم, he encourages us to learn Allah's names and to memorize them and to act upon them and to invoke and to supplicate to Allah through those names. Allah says, call upon Allah. Invoke Ar Rahman. It doesn't matter which of the names of Allah you use. It doesn't matter which of Allah's beautiful names that you choose to supplicate to Him with. Fadahul Asma al Husna, because He has all of the beautiful names. And Allah tells us in another verse, Wadilahi Asma al Husna, Fadruhu biha, Wadahul Nadina Yuhiduna fi Asmahi, He sees only my Kiyamu Yamarun, and to Allah belong the most beautiful names. Fadruhu biha. So therefore, sit down, get on your knees. Raise your hands, lift your arms, allow your armpits to be exposed. Call upon Allah through those names. Invoke, supplicate, implore Allah, beg Allah through His beautiful names. And as far as those who don't believe in those names, as far as those who accept some of them and reject others, as far as those who play games and twist and warp Allah's names, then Allah says, Wadharu, leave them alone. Don't busy yourself with them. Don't argue with them. Don't fight with them. Don't force them. So you tell them that can we alone? They will be rewarded for what they used to do. Their reward, their punishment is not in your hands. You memorize Allah's names. You call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through those names, and most importantly, you act upon the requirement of those names. And this is the true manifestation of that hadith. That whoever memorizes Allah's name to go to paradise. It doesn't just mean that you sit down and you buy a book and you pick up a pamphlet or you go on the internet and you memorize 99 names of Allah and you go to Jannah. It doesn't mean that. That's not what's meant by that hadith. Rather, memorizing them by heart, calling upon Allah through those names, and most importantly, acting upon those names. You know that Allah has this description and it's straight and it's quality, so you know the truth and act upon it. So the Prophet Sallallahu he informs us and he tells us of one of the easiest ways of going to paradise that takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of concentration, a little bit of sacrifice, but it is still relatively easy. How many names of famous politicians, actors, musicians, you've memorized, athletes. If I ask you right now, who starred in this game? Who won the MVP in this era? Who did you play with? What was his name? What was his jersey number? 
what were the records and the accolades that he made in his championship game? You could easily tell me. Oh, that was such and such. He started that game. And he won that championship. No, that's a different team. That's 76, not 77. He was injured that year. We can easily memorize the names of these futile things. Things that are of no weight, no value, no benefit. But Allah's 99 names, you've been Muslim for 30 years. 20 years, you've been Muslim your whole life. You never ever had to worship a cross or a crucifix. You never thought Allah is over Jehovah was one of three. You never were put through the test of eating swine, and drinking alcohol, and going and listening to the lies on Sunday morning. You never ever had to experience that pain and that trauma. As the Prophet of Islam told his companions about those who will go to paradise, those who will not be punished, those who will not be questioned, those who will not be reckoned. And the Messenger of Allah said something, he never informed the companions exactly who they were. And he left and he went into his house. And the companions, فَخَوْضَ النَّاسُ فِي أُولَٰئِكَ They stood up at nighttime. Who were these special people that would go right to Jannah? And from the first of their guesses, is that they said, Perhaps these special people that will go right to paradise are the baby companions. The companions that never ever made shirk. They were upon La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah from day one. Not like I came, I became a Muslim after I worshipped other than Allah, after I thought Allah was one of three, after I drunk wine and I ate swine and I fornicated and I did all the wrong stuff, and then I became a Muslim. But we don't know which one is better. And perhaps those who entered into Islam from Kufr have a greater appreciation and a greater value for Islam than those who are brought up and raised as Muslims. As Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was quoted to have said, فِيمَا يُرْوَانْهُ إِنَّمَا يَنْقُضُ عُرْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ عُرْوَةً عُرْوَةً إِلَى نَشْعَى فِي الْإِسْلَامِ مَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفَ الْجَهِلِيَةِ The thing that would destroy Islam and rip it apart piece by piece, link by link, stitch by stitch, one bristle of fabric of the rope, one by one that would destroy Islam, is a youngster who grows up in Islam and he doesn't know anything about Jahiliya. He doesn't know about darkness. He doesn't know about struggle and sacrifice. Everything is easy and simple and handed to him. So the point is, brothers and sisters of Islam, Allah Azzawajal has beautiful names. And it is our duty, it is our responsibility, and most importantly, it's our honor. We should be happy. We should take the initiative to learn the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to practice them. And most importantly, call upon Allah and invoke Allah via those beautiful names. أَقُولُ مَا سَمِنْتُمْ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatullahi wa salamuhu ala ibadihi al-lazhi nasrafa ama ba'd We all know that Allah tells us in this glorious book Ya ayuhal ladhina amnu kuhan kusakum ahlikum nara O you who believe, O faithful, O Muslims Protect yourselves, ward off from yourselves a fire That's terrible, that's vicious, that's haughty A fire that is nothing like the fire on this earth a fire that one day spoke to Allah, invoked its Lord, saying, Ya Rabbi, Akala ba'di ba'ban, Oh my Lord, I'm consuming myself. A part of me is eating up and destroying another part of me. Think about that. A hellfire, a fire that speaks, that talks, that feels, and that is combusting its destroying its own self. It's, it's a complaint to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah azza wa jalla, out of his mercy, he gave that fire of hell two pieces of relaxation or break. Think about that now. Allah is merciful to the fire of hell. So Allah he tells us, oh you believe, O oh Muslims, make for yourself some type of protection. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't think that you got it. Don't think that you can just do whatever you want to do and maneuver and bribe and argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cool and possible. Protect yourselves and save yourselves. But not just your own selves, but your young children. Your sons, your daughters, your grandsons, your granddaughters. Those who are from your kin and your kith, your progeny, your posterity. 
your line, your lineage, protect them as well. And there's so many things that can destroy our youth today. Gangs, drugs, alcohol, violence, the horrible, vicious fangs and claws of the internet. Kufr, disbelief, apostatizing from Islam. And there's a whole list of things that attack our youth. And one of the best ways that we can protect our youth and keep them from misguidance and keep them from the wrong paths, keep them from falling off track, is teaching them and educating them of Allah's beautiful names and attributes. Why do you need to join a gang, son? Tell me why. Why do people join gangs? Why do young Muslims that were in the masjid, praying, fasting, now they're in the street gangs? Why when you go to the county jails and the prisons, they're full of young Muslims, 16, 15, 17, 18. Why is this? What has happened to our sons, our children? Why did they go straight? Why do they join gangs? <coughs> studies will show, and studies will teach you and tell you that one of the biggest reasons why people join gangs is because of love and protection, and they feel a part of something. They feel like they're in a family. The father that I never had is the gang leader. The big brother that never took me out to the park and played with me and helped me out is in the game. The respect, the love, the attention, the money that I never could get from my friends and my family, I found in the game. I didn't want to shoot people. I didn't want to do harm to myself. I don't want to break any crimes, but I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be, and I wanted to be. Why do Muslims, young Muslims, smoke drugs? Why do they take pills, put needles in their arms? Why do they get tattoos on their faces and their necks? Why does a young Muslim sister go outside and reveal herself and expose herself and dress shamelessly? Because she doesn't love the law? Because she hates Islam? Because she just wants to be disobedient? She wants to just reject the truth or something deeper than that? So if you sat down and looked at all of the problems of your youth, I guarantee that you'll find a solution for every problem within Allah's names. You want to be accepted, you want to be loved. Why do you need to be loved by others if Allah loves you? And Allah's name is Al-Wadud. Allah is affectionate. Allah loves to be loved. Allah loves, Allah is loved, and Allah loves to be loved. Why do you need love from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You want to be strong, you want to be tough, you want to be a tough guy, you want to be real, you want to, you want to. Well, Allah is the most powerful son. Allah is an Aziz. There's no one stronger than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one higher than Allah subhanahu No one that can beat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who fight for his cause, and those who stand up for his cause, they will never, ever lose. You want to make money. You want to have your own. You're tired of being poor. You're tired of living in this situation. You want to have a lot of, you know, good, affluent wealth. Well, Allah is a razak. He's the one who gives you the money, son. Allah is the one who teaches you the skills. And Allah, and Allah, and Allah, you teach your children asma and husna. And this is one of the ways that will protect them in the night ta'ala from misguidance. And it will cause them to love Allah the mighty and the most high. And to be connected to Him. And when someone is connected to Allah, and when they love Allah, they'll do anything. And they'll sacrifice anything. And when they know who they're worshipping and why they're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they won't go astray. So the point is, brothers and sisters in our Islam, if I'm, an, I'm a parent myself, and I only know a few names of Allah, just a few, what, is, what does it mean, Ar-Rahman? What's the difference of Ar-Rahman and Rahim? Who is that Aziz, Al-Ghafur, Al-Tawab? What do these names mean? I don't know, son. I don't know. I've only been Muslim 50, 40 years, but I don't know what they mean. How do I expect my son to know what they mean? How do I expect my daughter to do the right thing? How do I expect my daughter not to think about suicide because she made a mistake? She fell into an error. She, she made a poor decision. But your suicide is only going to make your poor decision even worse and even poorer. And Allah is just forgives all sins. And Allah hides all sins. And Allah loves to make excuses for His servants. So it's no need for you to think about suicide. There's no need for you to leave this land. There's no need for you to feel that I'm ostracized from the community. Any problem that you're going through as a young man or young woman, you'll find the starting place and the ending place in the night's honor in Allah's beautiful names and, and His traits and His qualities. So the point is, brothers and sisters in our land, there are many different ways and many different aspects of raising children and empowering the youth and protecting them and loving them and guiding them from them is teaching them when they're young. As the Prophet ﷺ says, 
واضربوهم علي وهم ابناء عشر وفرقوا بينهم في المضاجع The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says when your children are seven, command them to pray. When they are ten, physically discipline them if they do not pray. And don't allow your young boys and young girls to sleep in the same bed under the same cover at that age. Seven years old, my son is out of puberty. He doesn't have an Adam, he doesn't have an Adam's apple. His voice is not deep. He doesn't have hair on his arms. He doesn't think he knows everything and he can do everything. Well, I'm saying it's seven, it's a tender age. Why do I have to tell him to pray at the age of seven? Why do I have to bring him to the master with me at the age of seven? Why is it no longer befitting to stay home with you only all day at the age of seven? Because Idnima Takabur Kinatu Al Khatma Wahia Ratbatun. Clay is only molded when it's moist. Clay is only molded and manipulated. It's only put together when it's wet. Once the clay dries, it's not what so much you can do with it. But how many of us are clay makers? How many of us know about pottery in China and things like this, but we all know about cement, right? You're a construction worker, you're a contractor, you work for the city. What do you do when you put down the pavement? You put up cones, you put up tape. No one walk in the cement. Don't walk in this because it's wet. And if you take one step, if you slip, it's going to be a permanent impression. And that is why people write their names when the cement is still wet, because they know it's going to stay there. So the concrete truck, it comes to the work site, to the job site. Is the sand still? Is the water still in the tube? Or is it already being mixed? It's wet. And then they pour out the cement. And the only way that they can mold it and fold it and line it up and place it how they want to place it on the pavement is when it's what? It's when it's wet. So if you think that you can raise your son to be a man after he's become a man, it's a major problem that you have. If you think you can teach your daughter to be a woman after she's a young woman, that's another major problem that you have. Clay only takes the impression when the clay is wet. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, teach your children to pray at 7, before 12, before 14, before they go through puberty. Teach them the right way and show them the right way. Uh, Hassan and Hussein, the Prophet ﷺ's grandsons, his grandchildren, how did he deal with them? How did he treat them? One day the Prophet ﷺ was giving the Jum'ah, leading the companions in the Salah, and they jumped on his back, and he allowed them to jump on his back. He stopped his sermon. He stopped his speech to the Muslims because of his grandsons. And one of them picked up a date one day and began to eat that date. The Prophet ﷺ told him to spit the date out. Take the date out of your mouth. Think about that. A young child eats one date. He says, Ama alinta He said, Oh grandson, don't you realize that you're special? Don't you realize that you're different? Don't you realize that we are not allowed to eat the charity of the people? And he was a young boy. And that was the Prophet Sallallahu grandson. And hadith, after hadith, after hadith, in which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave attention and he gave care to his youth. And from the greatest things that he taught the youth was their connection to Allah the Mighty and the Most High. When you need to ask someone, Ibn Abbas, whenever you want to ask for whatever thing you need to ask, make sure Allah is the first one that you ask. And why do you ask Allah? Except that you know and except that you believe that Allah is the one who gives. And He is the one who is never tired and never exhausted. There's no limit or cap on Allah's generosity and Allah is answering to, his, to the cause of His servants. So in summary, and in brief, the message that I want to share with myself and the message that I want to kindly remind you brothers and sisters of is the importance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes and the life of the daily Muslim. The daily Muslim, not the scholar, not the student of knowledge, but the nine to five bread maker, the nine to five plumber, the construction worker. And the importance and the value of Allah's names with regards to our children. And if we teach our children about Allah, and if we explain to them who Allah is and who He is not, then be given in that by Allah's permission, our children will be connected to Allah. And if they're connected to Allah, then no one can snatch them and mislead them unless Allah wills that. We ask Allah the mighty and the most high to guide all of the Muslim youth. We ask Allah to allow all of them who have left the path to return back to the path. I mean, we ask Allah to make the parents better parents, better role models. 
We ask Allah Azza wa to fix our households and our homes. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us good examples for our children. And we ask Allah Azza wa to make our children better than us. To make them righteous, to make them forthright, and to make them to be among those who take this land to the next level here in this country. Wa subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamu ala mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimu salam.